here we are, we're standing close hold. Need to introduce you to Bob. Bob, he's our volunteer. There's Bob. Now when Bob goes over the wall, when we get a man overboard, the first thing we do is stop the boat. Okay, so there goes Bob. Man overboard, stop the boat. Okay. Release the gear. Send the mayday, hit the DSC button, point at the casualty, make sure there's no ropes in the water. There's our casualty, there's our damn boy marking the spot where he's gone over, or pretty close to. The boat speed is now zero, we're stopped. Let's furl away the Genoa and we can motor downwind then. So man the furling line, release the jib, let it go across. Okay, the engine's on, I now motor downwind by four boat lengths past the casualty. The wind's coming from over there, downwind is down there. In the heat of the moment, that's one of the most difficult decisions a skipper's got to make, so make sure you get it right. Okay, we're going down past the casualty, we've got our finger on him, and I'm heading downwind. Various things can help me here. The flag on Danboy, that's flying downwind. That gives me a guide as well. Okay, that's about three boat lengths. There we go, that's a good four boat lengths. Power off, hold tight, we're gonna make the turn. Round she goes. As we complete our turn, if I've got it right, then my mainsail's flapping, I'm dead downwind and the mainsail's not powered up. The casualty is right on the bow, I motor ahead, stand slightly to one side, use the back of the pulpit initially and bring the casualty in towards the back of that pulpit. Be very, very conscious of your boat speed. If it's windy conditions, you've got to use more engine. But when we get alongside the casualty, we must have the boat stationary. They've had a pretty bad day as it is, hitting them with 13 tonnes of yacht is not going to improve it. In he comes to the pulpit, when he's about a boat length away, ease the speed right back, bring him into the side of the boat. Watch my boat speed. Cool distance, point please. I've now lost vision of the contact. When we're a boat length away from the casualty, adjust your aim, bring him into number one stanchion, which is just forward of where Elizabeth, who's going to do the pick up is. Bring your boat speed back, keep steering. Now the slower the boat goes, the more wheel you're going to have to use. Bring him in, I'm relying now on my pickup man, pickup girl, to tell me where the casualty is. Three metres off. Three metres, thank you. One metre off. One metre, that's lovely. Right on the bow. On the bow. Pick him up, and we've got Bob. Well done. In that man overboard drill, that was trusty Bob that went over. If that was a real life situation, you can imagine the panic that could go through a helmsman's mind. This is why it's just so important to practice this manoeuvre over and over again. So if it ever did happen to you, it becomes automatic what you're going to do. Stop the boat, mark the spot, hit the distress button. Let's go around and get him under power. Pick up. The method that we demonstrated there, that would be for a conscious person. You can use a boat hook to grab hold the life jacket. If it's a yacht like this, bring them round to the transom. If they're unconscious, if they bang their head when over the side, you've got a different scenario on your hands. Every situation is going to require a slightly different response, which you're going to have to decide on which is the correct one to make. Virtually all man overboard exercises that you'll do will be done under power. Gives you more control, you stand a much better chance of picking up your casualty first time. However, as a coastal skipper and as a yacht master, as a budding yacht master, you'll need to be able to demonstrate that you can do this manoeuvre under sail. To do it under sail, remember BBC. We're going to go on all the reaches. We're going to go beam reach. We're going to go broad reach. And then we're going to go close reach, pick up our casualty. We're going to use Dan here. He's going to be our casualty. And I'll take you through the exercise. Okay, Elizabeth, could you pop Dan in the water, please? Over the side, that's lovely. Man overboard. Okay, let's turn the boat onto a beam reach. Ease the main sheet, please. Get the wind across the boat. And I want my beam reach. Keep an eye on my casualty, there he is. So now, 
We're on our beam reach, sailing away from the casualty. To take the boat at least eight boat lengths away from where he's in the water. That's going to give me space to manoeuvre the yacht to get back round and to pick him up. Don't forget, no engine this time. OK, I'm now going to tack the boat round and bring her round onto the broad reach. So stand by to tack, ready about. Ready about. OK, wheel over. We're now going to drop down onto that broad reach. My casualty is now on the starboard side. But I don't want to go too far on this broad reach, maybe just a couple of boat lengths. OK, that's looking good. I'm now going to bring her up onto a close reach. OK, trim the sails, pull them in. Pull them in. OK, I'm now going to furl away the Genoa and come in just under my mainsail. We've furled away the Genoa. We're coming in on our casualty now just under the mainsail. Elizabeth's manning the main sheet. We've got the jammer off. She's controlling the sheet in her hand. As you're making your approach on close reach, test that you can let the sail right out and feather it completely. Can you send out the main sheet, please? Let's see if we can feather that sail. Keep a close eye on your boat speed. If I need to accelerate, if I need to pick up speed, I just sheet in on the main. Pull in the main sail, power me up to it. We're about a boat length off the casualty now. I'm going to be picking the casualty up on the lee side, offering a little bit of security for them as we bring them up to the shoulder. Okay, ease the main sheet right out, let it fly, let the mainsail flap, here we come. Boat speed's down to under a knot, 0.8 of a knot. We've got our cash. Picking up a buoy is much the same procedure as we've just demonstrated there with a man overboard under sail. Picking up a buoy, you want to have a good look at how other boats are lying around that area because that gives you your angle of approach onto your mooring buoy. Approach the same angle that they're lying because they're lying to the strongest element, be that the tidal stream or indeed the wind. Make your approach that angle in exactly the same manner. You say to yourself, will my sails fill or will they spill? So I'm either going to use the Genoa or I'll use my mainsail. Man overboard, why is that a mayday situation? Well, if someone's gone over the side of the boat, someone's life is in grave and imminent danger. It's a mayday situation. When we get them back on board, we then need to consider what condition they're going to be in. If they're conscious, we still have the fear of secondary drowning. Without being too morbid, if someone falls into the water, the first thing you're going to have is thermal shock big temperature difference between your skin temperature and the temperature of that water. If you go swimming or if you're dinghy sailing, you're prepared to get wet. When we sail on a cruising yacht, we're warm, we're not expecting that change in temperature. When you get thermal shock, the first thing that's going to happen, <gasps> big intake of breath. Now if your head's going under as that happens, you stand a chance of inhaling water. Normally the little valve at the back of the throat closes over and stops that from happening. But if it didn't, it only takes half a teaspoon of water going into the lungs and within 12 to 48 hours, secondary drowning can occur and that person can be dead. If someone goes over the side, treat it as a mayday situation and once you get them back on board, they go straight to hospital. Get them checked out by the experts. Navigation in restricted visibility, or fog as we know it. Fog's one of those things that given the option, you stay tied up alongside, wait till it goes. You don't want to play about with fog if you get the choice, but there's going to be times where you have no option, you've got to deal with it. If you get a fog bank coming in, the first thing you've got to do is get a fix. Get the boat's position down on the chart before you lose the chance to do so. The biggest danger with fog is being run down by something a lot bigger than you. We're talking commercial shipping, collisions, that sort of thing. So you've got to get yourself to a position of safety. The safest place is in shallower water. So you head for shallower water. In the meantime, you're going to prepare your boat for this fog bank that's now approaching. You're going to warn everybody on board. It's life jackets on if they weren't on already. Radar reflector. Get the radar reflector up. Get all your toys on, get the GPS on, your chart plotter, your echo sounder, VHF, everything on, so that you've got all your options open to you for safe navigation. Fog signal, you're going to need a fog signal. Well, if we're sailing, it's one long, two short, every two minutes. If we decide to down sails, use the engine, it's one long blast, every two minutes. Get your fog signal ready.
You've warned all your crew, you've got everybody up, post lookouts. Make sure they use their ears. Ears are much more effective than eyes in a fog situation.